Hi everyone, this is Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a fabric basket liner. You can use these for bread baskets at your dining table or if you have baskets sitting around your house like in your bathroom, you can select fabric to go with your decor and put it in those baskets. They're really for anything this is a really fast project. It's really easy and it is really a beginner's project. So let's get started. In the past I have found when working with baskets that often the area around the top edge is different than the area around the bottom edge. Usually the top edge for some reason is always bigger but always measure that. So if this is the bigger side this is the measurement you're going to use. And mine is. I've already pre-measured it so I know it's bigger. So I'm going to measure it now and the bottom area is 10 by 7 and a half. So write your number down of what your measurement is. Now I'm going to measure the two longer sides. Okay. And whichever is the longer one is what you want to use and this is 10 by 5 and then the shorter sides are 7.5 by 5. Now the blue writing here is the actual measurement of the basket. The red is the cutting size. So for the bottom you're going to add a half inch to each one of these numbers here. So your bottom piece, 10 and a half by 8, and you only need one piece. The sides, you'll add a half inch to the length along the side, and this is the height, you'll add 3 inches because you want to have enough for seam allowance and for it to fold over the top edge and come down the side of the basket a little bit. And so 10 and a half by 8 inches, cutting two. And then for the shorter sides, add a half an inch and three inch, and you'll cut it 8 inches by 8 inches, and you'll need two. If you've never cut out quilt fabric before and you need instruction on how to do that, Click on the link in the upper right hand corner. Take all of your side pieces and stitch them together. So here's a short, my long side, short side, long side. And then once you've got them stitched together, you fold it to where the two ends come together and then stitch here. Now you're using a quarter inch seam. As you're stitching them, you're doing your quarter inch seam, you're going to stop one quarter inch from the bottom. This is on all of your seams and then back stitch here. You want to leave that last quarter inch open. I also recommend doing either a zigzag stitch or some sort of a binding overlock stitch on your raw edges because it'll protect them from unraveling when you're washing it. Remember, food is going to be touching this, so they will get soiled. Place your bottom piece facing front side up. This is mine right here. Take your sides and line up one side. And if you cut everything correctly, it should match along there. Go ahead and pin across there. You're going to be doing another quarter inch seam along the bottom here, but right here is where my side seam ends, right here. So I'm going to manually lower my needle in so it's right next to where that seam ends. Back stitch and then stitch all the way down to this end here and stop next to where this side seam ends and then back stitch. Then just turn it, go to your next side, line it up, 
and do the same thing. So go around all four sides and do that. After you've got all your pieces stitched together, I have some suggestions on how to finish off your top edge. If you don't want any trim on it of any type, here's how I suggest you finish it off. And do this at your ironing board. Fold it over a quarter of an inch and press with your iron. Do that all the way around. Fold it again and press and do that all the way around. Then at your sewing machine, stitch along this inside folded edge. How I'm going to do mine is I'm going to use bias tape. Now, I didn't have the narrower bias tape, which I would have preferred the half inch, but this is three quarter inch, and you can even use quarter inch if you want. So to put bias tape on the bottom edge, unfold this, because it's folded in half for you already. Place it inside there. Bring this edge up against that inside fold line. Fold it back over. Now when you go to stitch this on, don't start right down here. Go over about three inches, I suggest. Then put your needle in there on your sewing machine and begin stitching on this edge. And as you stitch, you would just keep adjusting your bias tape and stitch a little more. As you come back around to where your two ends are coming together, stop a little ways back here. Take it out of your machine. Take your two ends and overlap them and cut one, the one side and overlap it about a half an inch. I always cut a little more than I need because I want to make sure I, did, I didn't cut too much off. I think I need to sharpen my scissors. There we go. Then unfold both ends. Completely unfold them. And then bring the two ends together. After you have stitched it together, I recommend you finger press this seam open. Fold your bias tape back up the way it originally was. Okay, Fold it in half. And then place your fabric in there and finish stitching it all the way across. One more trim that you can add to this is to lay rickrack over the top edge of the bias tape and stitch it all around. So there's a lot you can do. You can even put a little ruffle on here. If you have a sewing machine that has decorative stitching, you can even do decorative stitching along the edge. Here's one I made a few days ago and I was really tired and I made it too big but I really loved the fabric and I didn't want it to go to waste. So here's something you could do if that's an issue for you. Lay your elastic down and you're going to pull on the elastic but keep the fabric straight. So with one hand you're manipulating the fabric and the other hand, you're stretching the elastic. Do a zigzag stitch down the center. And when you release it, it gathers up. And then it hugs the basket. For more beginner's sewing projects, play this video to the very end where you will see a green screen and then click on the links. If you like this video, would you please click on thumbs up and don't forget to click on that share button to share it with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go to that button in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Don't forget to enter your email address and click on the little bell so you receive email notifications to your phone. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, see you next time and happy sewing!